Caitlin Clark is bigger than the NCAA tournament. Caitlin Clark is bigger than every player in the NCAA tournament, with the possible exception of a 55-year-old that knocked in 10 threes for Oakland and our friend Greg Campy. Caitlin Clark gets ready to start her tournament quest. And as she does that, she's going to have to take off the money belt. That's right. She's going to have to take off the money belt, drop the Costanza-sized wallet in the car, and say, all right, Let's go ball. Hey, Double D, yes. Where'd that money come from? Well, let me tell you. And how much is it? Well, let me help you with that. There is talk that she earns $900,000. However, most analysts scoffs at this. Now, let me ask you a question. I want you to hearken here for a second because we do hearken on this show. Hearken back to the day when you were in college and you had nine hundred k to roll around with. Now, I want you to hearken to that. How would that go for you? Holy hell. I know how he would have gone for me well. Really, really well. One time I walked out of a party at my house, and a girl said, Dad, come with me. I'm going to go buy a pack of smokes. I'm like, I'm in. I was tired of the party. A lot of people I didn't know. Walking up, and there is a red Porsche Carrera And I looked up to my heavenly father and I said, God, if there's a, let me, let this one, please. Girl throws me the keys and goes, you're driving. I go, you're damn right I am. Yeah, that's right. That would have been the norm for me and my boy Pilar. I would have bought me one, him one, and probably the entire town beers at Nick's. I couldn't have handled it, except that I would have handled it. Well, Caitlin Clark seems to be okay with it, and here's the deal. They're saying that she makes 900, but the word on the street is she earns seven figures, has deal with Bose, Nike, and State Farm, the I the Iowa grocery chain Hy-Vee, another corporate partner, sometimes pays for her private security at public events. Now, I don't know why the the security is just getting out there. That's been known. I mean, she in the handshake lines has two meathead Iowa cops chasing her. What is she, Nick Saban? She's got to be Saban. she got to have security. But you know what? I'm down for it because she deserves it. No, I'm not going to lie to you. We like the long-range shooter, do we not? I think we do. I think we saw it last night. We like the step-back jack. Knock them in, shoot 23s, no twos, 10 threes made, no assists, Oakland wins. We like that a lot. In fact, it got me out of my seat yesterday. Well, Caitlin Clark does that like it's her job. And then she adds about, oh, I don't know, five twos in the mix, about eight, nine assists, gets some boards, and does it with a flair that people are digging. Now, yesterday, I got accused of not liking women. The boys out east or west, Chaz, the Chasters from the northwest, some hairspray on TV started talking about how tone deaf college athletics people are, and I've had enough. I'm not going to lie. I've had enough. I went to a Hall of Fame banquet, and I just happened to run into numerous people that are involved with college athletics, and they're all like, yeah, we're kind of tired of it. So I got tired of this hairspray. I said, hey, look, I'll tell you what. There is no more tone deaf group than the DEI hired hairsprays. And all Chaz came at me that I hate women. No, 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 no. I love women and women love me. That's just the way it is. And it's always been that way. I have that impish, I could get you in trouble grin. And of course, the sexy. And of course, the used to be parted down the middle main. I wasn't like Steve Alford, but I'll tell you this. I was something. Anyway. Having said that, I've always loved women. I like women's hoops, except when I don't. I don't like women's hoops when it's all jump balls and fat finishers around the rim. I don't like women's hoops announcers. Debbie Antonelli doing a game yesterday had absolutely no insight. I opened Twitter and Andrew Marshan, from like, who's like a critic, is like, Debbie Antonelli's really good. No, she's not. She's horrible. Has a bad voice, nice person, earnest person, but hasn't said two things that don't involve a statistic ever. I get it, though. You want special but equal. We understand this, but not Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark is getting special because she's special. 
that's what she's getting, and that's what she deserved. If you told me that she was going to make $5 million, I'd say bingo. If you told me she was going to represent everything, the one thing I would like to see, though, and I don't really understand this, and maybe she does this, I'd like to see her involve, this is just me being a nitpicking whiner, uh, I'd like to see her involve her teammates. Those State Farm ads, not only hers but the Lopez brothers, are the dumbest things alive. No ad should run except for Charles Barkley. Caitlin Clark's trying, but she needs to get to the point where she doesn't need her uniform on. That's when you're a star, except if you're those two guys, the very vampire-ish white guy trying to act down with the hood, Chet Holmgren, and whoever that is with him. I'm guessing it's Shea Gilgis Alexander, but they need to put name tags on those two. That's the dumbest commercial. But Caitlin Clark is getting everything that she deserves. Caitlin Clark is an uber star. Caitlin Clark just appeals to us. I know what you're saying. Well, Angel, we should. Well, maybe she should, but she's been a pain in the ass all year. Sorry, she has. Game isn't interesting. The big girl in in co- women's college basketball isn't interesting. We've seen the big girl flop around in women's college basketball, get tied up, play under the rim, stuff the ball under the ball. We've seen that, but we haven't seen Caitlin Clark. We haven't seen the Steph Curry-like threes. We haven't seen the swagger. We haven't seen all the nonsense. We haven't. At least I haven't. I know Donna Tar- Diana Taurasi was kind of like that, but she was imminently unlikable. Like, you can't look at Diana Taurasi and go, ah, yeah, likable. No. There's something about Caitlin Clark, something wide-eyed. This is a perfect picture, actually, right here. There's something wide-eyed and Midwestern about her. Diana Taurasi just didn't have it. I'm sorry. She didn't. I don't know. Maybe Maya Moore did, and I didn't pay that much attention. Maybe she did. Maybe she didn't. Aaliyah Boston's here in in, uh, Indianapolis. I liked her game. She was fun in interviews, but no. I mean, it doesn't happen with every player. There's a lot of guys that shoot threes, like the NBA media is forcing Dame Lillard on us. No. Steph Curry's easy. He's friendly. We like him. Somehow, someway, he resonates with all of us. It's an interesting dynamic. It's like teams. You know, some teams just resonate with their student body, and some teams don't. And it isn't always a matter of which team is better or which team is worse. There's just, and I always go to this, the Supreme Court justice that said this about pornography. I can't define it, but I know it when I see it. That's how I feel about, A, how does somebody resonate? I don't know. I just know it when I see it. Yeah. Good for her. Hey, this is going to happen every day. This is already happening every day. I've heard from so many people about gambling, sliding in the DMs, threats. An NBA coach, uh, J.B. Bickerstaff, whose father, long-time NBA coach, J.B. Bickerstaff said this. He's been threatened by gamblers. He says sports betting brings the distraction to the game, and he is 7,622% correct. I've heard horror stories about players on campuses. Hey, man, F you. What? We won by eight. Yeah, you need to win by 10. You know, that kind of thing. I told you the story. A family member called me. This is going back to 1981 in the fall. Now, think about this. I miss a free throw. Nationally televised game. Game was over. I made one, missed one. Phone in my door. Hey, Danny. Yeah. Hey, great game. You guys won. Yeah. But what the hell? Cost us all money. What are you talking about? Second free throw. I'm like, yo, boom. And then I sweated it out all evening thinking the FBI was going to come get me. This has been going on forever, and now you open it up. I mean, stand on the rail at a horse racing track. In the middle of a Saturday afternoon at a, at a smaller track or in the middle of the week, watch the horse that comes in second and fades. It's got to come by and then go back to the paddock. Listen to the people on the rail screaming at the jockey. No different than college basketball, professional basketball. Every sport 
is now being inundated with threats to its athletes and its coaches. Here's what Bickerstaff had to say. They got my telephone number and were sending me crazy messages about where I live and my kids and all that stuff. It brings a distraction to the game that can be difficult for players, coaches, referees, everyone that's involved in it. And I think that we really have to be careful with how close we let it get to the game and the security of the people that are involved in it. He goes on to say, because again, it does carry weight. He's absolutely right about this. A lot of times the people who are gambling, uh, like this money pays their light bill or pay their rent. And then the emotions that come from that, boy, is he right. So I do think we're walking a very fine line, and we have to be extremely careful in protecting everyone who's involved. That's Cavs coach J.B. Bickerstaff. Boy, is he right. I mean, I've told this story before. I had a guy, Michigan State fan, just because of comments, I said, show up at my daughter's work asking where we live. I had a guy, a state trooper, during a game at Iowa City, Put on Facebook, hey, if anyone's in Carver Hawkeye, shoot Dockets in the head. That's not even the gambling element. And the fact of the matter is this. People get really emotional when they lose money. People get really emotional when they owe money. They get really desperate when they owe money. And that ain't a good thing. Because doubling down in gambling is almost like a human emotion. It's almost instinctual. Well, I lost that, but if I double this, this is going to happen. That's why there's ads about don't double down. But once you do and you lose, guess what? You get desperate. And what do desperate people do? Make horrible, horrible decisions, starting with getting a hold of a player, a coach, a referee. That's bad business, but it's happening every day. Nobody wants to talk about this except for me. But I talk to coaches all the time, and they are incredibly concerned. And almost to a man, they have stories about something happening, whether it was to them, one of their staff members, a player, almost to a man. And you think it's going to get better? It is not going to get better. It's only going to get worse and worse and worse. I don't know, and I don't think anybody knows, what's going on with the point shaving at Temple, if there in fact is point shaving. Hell, there was point shaving, I've talked about this many times, when it wasn't even legal, when you didn't see every other ad with J.B. Smoove and the Mannings out there. No. Uh Uh-uh. No. My guy Greg Doyle put a thing out, and he got nervous because he called sports bros and people thought it was the Mannings, so he backtracked. Oh, people don't want to offend the Mannings, but hey, these wholesome guys – They're out there with Daddy Manning, Cooper Manning, for Caesar Sportsbook or MGM Sportsbook. Don't at me about this crap because every single person you know in one way or the other is involved in some type of gambling, whether it's a pool. Hell, at Indiana back 100 years ago, we were in and had a fantasy football. No, it was a baseball league. Oh, man. Oh, man, a memo went out from compliance and the athletic director. Bad people we were. It was damn near everybody not named Bob Knight in the athletic department. Bad people we were. Holy cow. Squelched this immediately. All right. Well, now, are you crazy? Why would anybody worry about a pool? Remember when Rick Neuheisel got fired for being in an NCAA pool? They must have wanted him out for another reason. But I got to tell you, the truth of the matter is, hey, it's wide open now. Imagine walking across a college campus. You're walking across. You got Susie Rottencrotch with you. You got your backpack. You're going to your economics class. You just won a game last night by six. Hell of a game. Packed house. You hit a jump shot. Next thing you know, you're walking across, and some guy's like, hey, Dan. I had you getting 18. You missed two free throws. You got 17. What the hell? Hey, Dan. Line was seven last night. You won by six. Hey, Dan. 
I had you for a combined 25 points, rebounds, and assists. You had 23. What the hell? I'm telling you, that's going on on every college campus. And it's even worse in the NBA. It is because people feel like, well, these guys are highly paid. We can say whatever we want to them. It's actually much worse. And J.B. Bickerstaff ain't wrong. When somebody sent me a bag of dicks, true story, in the mail, I thought to myself, well, that's funny. They were gummies, not the good gummies, just the old school gummies. So I ate one. They were horrible. And then I thought, huh, man, they got my address. Well, unbeknownst to me, it's easy to get everybody's address. That ain't good. It's apparently easy to get everyone's phone number. That ain't good. Man, I don't know what to tell you. But he ain't wrong. And it ain't slowing down. Now, what also isn't slowing down is guys fixing games. I'm telling you right now, it ain't slowing down. Do I believe the Vanderbilt player, the quarterback who was like second team or whatever he was? I don't know. Everybody, when people just say the Italian mob, I don't know. I'm sure there is an Italian mob. I don't want the Italian mob after me, but I got to tell you, I'm not sure I buy the story. And the story seems to have gone away. The story was that a Vanderbilt backup quarterback was offered 300000 to fix a game and games in the SEC are fixed and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I don't know. Seems like somebody got to him. Maybe it was a Greg Sankey mob that got to him, much stronger than the Italian mob. Greg Sankey starring as Michael Corleone. <laughs> but, man, this is a problem. This is a big problem, and it is a problem that ain't going away. In fact, I saw people say this yesterday as I morph into the NCAA tournament. The big story is Oakland, right? The big story is Oakland University losing to Kentucky or beating Kentucky, excuse me. And all right, I get it. No, I do. But the truth of the matter is this. Um, A lot of people were saying, Reed Shepard, Dillingham, were you on the take? I don't know. Jack Golke just seemed to be banging your ass. I mean, he dropped 10 threes. Kid transferred from D2, drops 10 out of 23s. When next time, and this is actually not fair, but next time somebody tells you about somebody that's great that your school recruited, ask him a very simple question. Can he shoot? Because I'm telling you right now, if he can't shoot, he can't play. If he can shoot and get it off quick, he can play. And, Everybody now is lining up with Greg Campy, but we've always known Greg Campy to be the best. I always said he smelled the sausage back in the day. He was at Oakland, which is a little bit north of Bowling Green. I was at Bowling Green, and we played. I wanted home. He wanted his place. But he always smelled the sausage, always, and did an unbelievable job. Did you know that he signed with the Seattle Seahawks as a white cornerback, cornerback, Did you know that he has the Bowling Green State University punting record of 77 yards, averaged 59 yards in a game, averaged 44 yards, then played basketball? That's right. He did. He's a legendary athlete. Now, this was a long time ago. He tried to recruit me to Toledo. I remember he called me. I had a great conversation with him. And I remember the conversation because I thought they were cheating. True story. He was an assistant at Toledo, and he goes, yeah, we got a host family to take care of you. I'm like, interesting. And then when I was playing baseball at Indiana, I went to the bathroom at Toledo. Why? Because we got snowed out at Michigan, and we all drove Michigan, Indiana, to Toledo. The weather was better. The field was ready. We played. Between games or between innings or pregame, I went up into the gym to take a whiz. All of a sudden, out from behind the bleachers, Greg Campy, hey, You didn't get to play much. I didn't. I had knee surgery. You want to transfer? No, I'm good. Always loved camping. Did. Now the world's finding out. The world's finding out about Jack Colkey, too. Hey, that dude banging them all in. Now, here's the problem. Here's the problem. You got to do it again. 
got to do it tomorrow. It's just the way the world works. As to Kentucky, well, I guess that was my original point. People are all over the internet. The Kentucky websites crashed last night. I don't necessarily take great pleasure in Kentucky getting its ass beat. Cal's always been good to me. In fact, famously a few years ago, I think I still have it on my phone, I got in trouble. The Indy Star got mad. They said I called a kid in Scottsburg, Indiana, a meth head. I didn't call anybody a meth head. I didn't know anybody's name. I did threaten to go beat up the school board, which, oh, by the way, right now the whole school board is under investigation, including the superintendent who ripped my ass for missing $5 million. But I digress. I said, hey, look, on your way to Scottsburg, take a dump in Scottsburg. It was a play on take a dump in Kentucky, which was one of our mottos. I live in Indiana. Go take a dump in Kentucky. Eh. Anyway, Cal left me a hilarious voicemail. I mean, USA Today, Dan Wolken was mad. Uh, Indy Star, all of Gannett, every newspaper, blah, 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 blah. I'm the worst human being alive. And Cal left me this hilarious voicemail that I could not stop laughing. Take a dump in Kentucky. Yeah, he's good. I like him. I don't care. A BYU stinks. Let me say this again. You know, you Big 12 guys that told me how good the Big 12 is, BYU ain't it. And I told you that before. Now, I didn't know if Duquesne had enough offense. But this is about the coach of Duquesne and his wife, Donna. I was, te- I was tweeting with her last night. Donna Dambrot is fighting cancer. She told me these last few weeks have made her forget about cancer. Keith Dambrot, the coach, retired in his mind at the beginning of the year. He announced it at the end of the year once they made the NCAA tournament. He told me that he was thinking about retiring, but his beautiful wife's cancer diagnosis made the decision that much easier. Well, guess what? They're on a wild ride, man. Duquesne took down BYU. Duquesne was better than BYU. In fact, Duquesne played defense hard. And then they got confident, and then they made free throws, and then they held off BYU. Look, the SEC is talented but stupid. I mean, they are stupid. It's the dumbest collection of basketball players. I think the coaches are good, but they're stupid. And if there are teams that we say, hey, you can beat them with a shot or pass fake. Well, that's what Michigan State did yesterday to Mississippi State. Oh, man, and the Big 12 got lucky. Horse bleep call against Samford or Kansas probably would have been packing. But back to Keith Dambra. I knew Keith when he was assistant coach. I knew Keith not as LeBron James' freshman and sophomore year coach. He had a problem going way back at Central Michigan. He rehabbed, right? Got in the city of Akron, did great work with kids, got the St. Vincent, St. Mary job. Here comes LeBron and Maverick Carter and Drew Joyce and these kids. He molded them. Drew Joyce Sr. took over when Keith went to Akron to work for a really, really good coach named Dan Hipsher. So Hip gets fired, Dan Bright gets the job, Akron gets really good, and he ends up leaving his hometown to go to Duquesne. Why? His dad was a basketball player in the 50s at Duquesne. How about that? Uh, how about that? That's pretty good. Now he's got him in the tournament. If you can name the best player at Duquesne, I'll give you a penny. Two of them, Sayugo Green and Dick Ricketts. Yeah, I know Norm Nixon played there. Sayugo Green and Dick Ricketts. That's right. That's the two best. I told you this before. Sayugo Green spiked my dad in a picture in the New York Times. All right, my boy Alfonso. So Alford's up 17. I think it was 17. It's like 15. They hit a three. They make it 12. One of his players taking the ball is the biggest play of the game. Taking the ball out of bounds, just haphazardly throws a long pass, stolen, three, rally, on, bench, pumped. Biggest play of the game. The biggest plays of the game are not only are not always the plays at the end. They're the plays that give the other team, particularly losing by a little bit, some oxygen. And remember, in this tournament, these are, for the most part, successful teams. You know, Dayton, pretty good record. Hadn't beaten anybody. And now, guess what? Indiana fans, we don't want Alford. Okay. 
I don't know. I saw Alfred coaching there, and I saw Woody's demented ass stumbling around somewhere in a circle, having a scotch, a cigar, and trying to figure out a left to right read in St. Thomas. Don't at me, people. Alfred, he's got to live with it. I know all the jokes. I know all the things. I know that the fan bases that he left will be all over him. But you know what? Indiana's fan base shouldn't be one. Why? Hell, we're sitting at home. We're sitting at home glad that a dude that looks like a chick that wears a headband around like up here renew his back. Yay! Anthony Leal's back. Yay! Trey Galloway's back. Yay! You know who's saying yay? The bars in Bloomington because that's all those crew are good for. Samford played the brakes off of Kansas. Bucky Ball looked fun. Kansas looked good. I mean, Kansas got up 21 without Lance McCullers. I'll tell you the guy that saved the day is that little Harris kid, the point guard. Everybody for Kansas was shook. I mean shook. Big crazy Hunter Dickinson shook. Uh, KJ shook. Furphy shook. Shook. But you know who wasn't with about three, four, two, one minutes to go? Harris. Harris, the point guard, was like he was just balling. He went to the free throw line, made a steal, made a couple good passes, and Kansas got a horrific, horrific call. See, college sucks. College referees, the difference between college and the NBA, there's a lot. One, in the NBA, you can take 72 steps and nobody cares. But in the NBA, they don't anticipate calls. They don't do it. In the NBA, they wait till the action happens, then they make the call. Sometimes the better referees do that in college. That's why you see an occasional late whistle. And the announcers, since I'm not doing it anymore, they don't understand this. They don't. I'm sorry. I do. I study. I watch. They wait like the NBA. Well, the referee in this case, I'm not going to say his name because I really like him. He anticipated a foul. He just assumed it was going to be a foul. Bad call. Would have been five on four the other way. Five on four the other way, uh, you'll take your chances down one to go to the NCAA round of 32 from Samford. Horrific. Now, here's the deal. That's one of those that you stay up at night and you go, man, what if? I got four. I'm not going to go into them. I probably already have on here, but I got four of those. One from high school, two from as a player, uh, one from as a player, and two from as a coach. Eh, you live and you learn. Texas and Colorado State. The coach at Colorado State, Nico Medved, has done a really good job. They played Virginia. In the first four, he kind of whined about it, right? He said that his league got misseated. Well, his league lost. He lost. And you know what? They lost in spectacular fashion. What do you mean spectacular fashion? Well, scored 11 points in the first half. They played Virginia. Virginia rubbed off on them. It was worse than Virginia. Watching that first half of basketball between Texas and and, and Colorado State made Virginia look good, really good. It did. But anyway, Texas moves on. America's second-worst coach team in America moves along. Hey, let's hear from Samford. I know me personally. I know the way these guys think. We don't think that anybody better than us. We feel like every time we're on the court, we supposed to win, and – I don't feel like it's an upset. I feel like we're going to win, and when we win, it's not going to be a surprise to us. It might be a surprise to all the brackets that are going to be messed up, but it, it definitely won't be a surprise to us. Well, it was. You lost. I would love that quote, though. You know, and the kid from Oakland said the same thing. We're no Cinderella. Well, we're going to find out. I mean, you know, you can say whatever you'd like. It's like me saying I have hair or Biden saying that the economy is great and the border is secure. You know what I'm saying. It is what it is. But the truth of the matter is Sanford played the brakes off of Kansas. And I got to give Kansas credit, man. When you lose your leading scorer like McCullers and you got Hunter Dickinson a little banged up. Hmm. By the way, does anybody that's a big man pass the ball either as an outlet or in full court better than Hunter Dickinson? Wow. That dude snaps the ball. He's always looking to outlet. He's a modern-day Wes Unsell. You children. Look up Wes Unseld or ask your father. All right, this is an odd story. 
This is a very odd story. You ready? ESPN has revealed that Timberlake's analyst, not TV or radio analyst, no, not that, a basketball analyst, analytics guy, is in custody and booted by the team after stealing vital information from a team executive. Listen to this. And was arrested Monday after the team, the Timberwolves executive vice president, Sachin Gupka, filed a complaint against the now fired analyst. The analyst's name is Shakar. Here's the deal. Shakar allegedly, uh, Sharkar, I guess, I I don't know. You can read it right there. S-A-R-K-A-R, reportedly snuck into Grupka's office at the Target Center February 3rd to steal a hard drive. He noticed the hard drive's absence, Gupka did, on the FIP. Security footage showed Sakar entering the office as Holmes relayed, Sakar previously worked with the executive. Grupka then requested for Sakar's transfer out of the department due to poor performance. Grupka's hard drive contained private information concerning team contracts and vital data. Authorities also found that Shakar had accessed more than 5,000 files and downloaded them onto another device. Man, what are you doing? Here's the deal. Everybody wants to work in sports. Everybody does. All right, so you get a job in sports. You're the Shakar guy. I'm sure it's like the American dream, right? And then you go F it up, and now you're in the can. Now you're in the can. It ain't good being in the can. I've never been in the can. One of my life's goals is to never be in the can. Shakar's in the can. All right, this pissed me off yesterday. This absolutely pissed me off. Bobby Smitherson is the athletic director at Long Beach State. Bobby Smitherson fired Dan Munson after 17 years to coach at Long Beach State. Dan Munson and his team then went out and won the Big West Tournament, prolonging the relationship between Smitherson and Dan Munson. Munson has been polite. He was on my radio show in Indy. He's a friend. He was being polite. Yeah, hey, look, new voice, 17 years, blah, 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 blah. Smitherson, a longtime douchebag, had this to say. My belief and hope is that by doing what I did and the timing of it, they would play inspired. And that's what they did. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but it worked. So here's what this jackass had to do. This jackass, instead of being an athletic director, and just shutting the hell up. I mean, you're the athletic director. You made the decision. Guy got fired. You can't shut the living hell up and let the coach and the players have the moment, particularly after 17 years when you were like some little crumb-feeding guy at the bottom of the food chain, getting your knee pads out and high-heeling it, Camilla Harris style, to be the AD. I don't know if that really happened, but it seems like it with this guy. This guy took credit for nothing other than firing the coach, thinking it would motivate everybody. All right, my job is to position our coaches and student athletes to be successful. This was maybe an atypical way to do so, but I believed in the roster we had. I believed in our coaching staff and our ability to do something special. Maybe this was the catalyst they needed to be inspired to play for one another. That's Bobby Smitherin. Dan Munson basically said, hey, look, man, it's not worth getting into. If that's the way he feels, that's the way he feels. Jay Billis had an interesting tweet, though. Let's hear from, let's see from Jay. I love what Jay Billis put out there, man. I do. Think how inspired the Long Beach State team would be if they fired the AD. I mean, people are pissed. People all across the country are like, what a jackass. And rightfully so. That guy didn't try to inspire nothing. You know what that guy tried to do? That guy tried and hoped and hoped that, you know what? Dan Munson would quit. Dan Munson would quit, and next thing you know, the world would be a better place for him because he got to have, quote, his own guy. And if he can have his own guy in there, you know things are going to be great. So here's the deal. The deal is this. You know this guy's going to hire the next John Wooden. I'll tell you this. uh, 
I'm sure he's the smartest guy in the building, this AD. I'm sure he's the guy that's going to hire the next Urban Meyer. I'll tell you who hired the last Urban Meyer first, Paul Krebs. He was the athletic director at Bowling Green with us, and he was a brilliant man. So the AD, this is a new one for me. The AD now wants to keep and have credit. The AD now wants to say, this was my doing. This is my doing. This is what I did. See, this was all my plan. Look, at some point, you just let other people have a freaking moment, particularly when you're the owner, the general manager, the athletic director. You stand back, you watch, and you go, all right, hey, look, I can get down with this. This is cool. I'm all right with this. And then you move it along because ultimately, you moron Smitherman, you understand you got the power. You did it. You got rid of the guy you didn't like. And next thing you know, everything is back in your hands. You decide. Nobody else. You decide who becomes the next coach. Now, that's bad business, I'm assuming, for everybody involved, mostly for Long Beach State, because you've shown yourself to be a complete jackass. But, hey, it is what it is. Speaking of ADs, you know, Carla Williams, I'm sure she wants Tony Bennett out of there. I'm sure as an African-American woman athletic director, Carla Williams is under pressure to get, you know, Dave Lado back in there or someone of that ilk. Carla Williams is Virginia's athletic director, and apparently she got a little spicy with her likes on X. People are paying attention. Following the humiliating NCAA tournament loss, liking tweets, trashing the team and the selection committee for putting them in the field. Ah, look at Carla. You know she's catching hell. I mean, she got the whitest of white dude playing the whitest of white basketball, and you know she ain't down for that. So she's doing what folks that are dumbasses do. And she and the guy Smitherman are community dumbasses. She liked, and you're out. After one half, which will go down as the worst in tournament history, everyone is laughing at your horrible team. Hope the committee feels good about the incompetent decision to put UVA in the field. She likes those. She's the athletic director. Hey, that's nice. That's good. Tony Bennett. Thank you, Ed Selection Committee, for putting the insufferable, untalented, blah, 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 blah. She's liking these. That's what she does. She's liking these tweets on her freaking Twitter. How about that? I mean, I'm just telling you, man, people are stupid. 